Man. So he showed us John 8.32, the truth will make you free. So every area of our life where we believe truth in, we get free. Every area of our life where we believe lies, we're not free. And so, I mean, first, I believe truth, I get free first in my emotions, then I get free in my circumstances. But if I believe lies, I first get restricted in my emotions, and then I get restricted in my experience. So the battle's really between lies and truth. I'm not really a devil-focused Christian, and I know there's times where we got to deal with the devil, and I know there's people who've got great deliverance ministries, which is needed. But the devil's not our biggest problem. If I believe truth, I'm free, and if I'm free, it doesn't sound like the devil's bugging me very much. Even to put on the full armor of God in Ephesians 6, you've got to believe something to get those pieces on. So, the battle's between lies and truth, so the question is, how do we know for believing a lie? That's the question, because the nature of deception is, is that we don't know we're deceived. Once we know we're deceived, we're no longer deceived. <laughs> kind of makes sense. I was reading a book by a guy named Francis Frangipan called The Three Battlegrounds. And one of the battlegrounds is the mind. And he said something that just it changed my life. Matter, matter of fact, our whole ministry, Igniting Hope Ministry, came out of this. He said, every area of your life that doesn't glisten with hope, say glisten with hope. Every area of your life that doesn't glisten with hope means you're believing a lie, and that area is a stronghold of the devil in your life. I'll say it again. Every area of your life that doesn't glisten with hope means you're believing a lie, and that area is a stronghold of the devil in your life. Now, I read that, I close the book, I become instantly discouraged. Because I'm trying to find one area where I got hope. I, I can't find one, let them glisten. Let me tell you all the areas at that time that were telling me I was a failure. This was not a time to, you know, change how I believe. I, I, but it wasn't a convenient time. Let's laugh at all these things that were telling me I was a failure. I had a non-successful car. <laughs> <laughs> I had a non-successful bank account and salary. <laughs> My hair was starting to get non-successful. <laughs> I had a non-successful church size. <laughs> I, my home, which was a single wide old trailer sitting next to the church called the Parsonage, was not successful. It was in that season I'm reading this. Every area doesn't glisten with hope means you're believing a lie. And that area is a stronghold of the devil in your life. Yeah, and then I prayed a dumb prayer. Oh God, would you show me every lie that I'm believing? Should not have prayed that. Should have prayed, Lord, show me 10% of the lies I'm believing. Because <clears throat> I got a revelation, almost everything I believed in my life was a lie, and I was pastoring a church. <laughs> I had good doctrine, but bad beliefs. We need good doctrine. We need good doctrine. I mean, Jesus is God. How many of you... No, if you don't get that right, you got a problem. <laughs> the authority of Scripture. Salvation is by grace through faith alone, not of works. That's good doctrine, and there's so many others. But, I mean, you know, we can have good Bible doctrine and still be believing lies and still be filled with pessimism, victim mindsets, unworthiness, disappointment, worry, insecurity, you know, all, all of that. And, and so as, as you beginning to understand, all right, I need to go after how I'm thinking. And I began to understand that, that 
hope, and I'll, I'll share a verse here that will support that quote. I began to understand that my hope level was the indicator of whether I was believing truth or lies. So a lack of hope was like a check engine light on a car. I don't get, I don't get condemned when I see my check engine light come on. I don't say I'm a bad person. That, no, I'm just, it's great information. I don't get condemned if I don't have hope. But it's just, it's, that's the problem. And so he showed me Romans 15, 13, where it says now, say now. now. Wins now. Now, now. yeah. It's, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Now may the God of hope fill you. When? Now. Now? now? Okay, I mean, uh, when the coronavirus is over? No, no now. Uh, when, when political uh, division's over? No, 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 now. Wow, now. When you overcome that problem in your life? Now. When you're, all your family members are doing what you think they should be doing? Now. Oh, no, oh, it's now. You, we don't wait till the, It's now. now. Now may the God of hope fill you <laughs> with all joy and peace. Now, hope's got two buddies who hang out with him. One's called all joy, the other's called peace. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Say in believing. In believing. Which that's the key verse, uh, that's a key phrase in the verse. He's going to fill you in believing. So the moment I believe truth is the moment I start getting filled. Because my I'm already filled in my spirit. My soul starts getting filled. My mind, my will, and my emotions. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Ha, 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 ha. Uh -huh. I believe truth. I start getting filled. Get filled a little more. Start believing more stuff. Mm -hmm. Man. By his stripes, I'm healed. Ooh, I, buy, I heard that this morning. Faith comes by hearing. I got excited about that. When I open my mouth, miracles I go and just uh, <laughs> get filled. It didn't. I get filled, and it comes up to my eyes. Guess what? My eyes. My, oh God, I get so filled. I start seeing everything differently. Oh, I start seeing. Yeah, I, hey, I see me differently. Hey, I'm actually starting to kind of like me. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I can do this. I think I'm important. Uh, Hey, hey, I start seeing people differently. I think God can even use them. <laughs> I think they're not who their past says they are. Ah, yeah, in my nation. And so, because increasing hope is the evidence we're renewing our mind with truth instead of lies. Decreasing hope is the evidence we're renewing our mind with lies instead of truth. That changed my life. That changed my life. Because I made my lack of hope a bigger enemy to me than anything the devil was doing. I started re repositioning my spiritual warfare guns at my own beliefs. I mean, 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5 says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. We demolish arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, taking every thought. Every th How many thoughts? Every thought. Now, what the thoughts that we take captive, one of the main thoughts we take captive are thoughts that don't have hope. The most quoted spiritual warfare passage in the Bible is not talking about regional demonic principalities. And I'm not discounting that, that, there, that, that there's an existence of that, but it, that verse is talking about strongholds in our own mind. You know why it's called a stronghold? Because it has a stronghold. It kind of makes sense. By the way, 
and I'm going to wrap this up here. Whatever our strongholds are, we're constantly looking for proof to confirm what we already believe is true. Strongholds can be negative and positive, by the way. You can have a hope stronghold. You can have a victim mindset stronghold. You can have a joy stronghold. You can have a pessimism stronghold. And like if I have a stronghold that I don't have favor, that I'm a person with little favor. By the way, let's just laugh at this lie. You are a person with little favor. <laughs> if I have that stronghold that I'm constantly looking for not ha where I don't have favor. I won't even see where I, I do. And so this whole thing about hope, igniting hope, that our, our hope level is the indicator of whether we're believing lies or truth. I, I sensed this morning, and I know that in this room and people who are watching online, there are powerful people watching. There's powerful people here. I mean, we're all powerful. Just say, I'm powerful. Because I am who God says I am, not who my past says I am. The more I agree with who God says I am, the more it's going to manifest. The more I'll renew my mind that I'm powerful, the more I'll experience power. <laughs> We believe and then see, not see and then believe. It's the way the kingdom works. We don't deny what's going on. We don't deny the facts of problems. We just don't get our beliefs out of it. We believe in truths higher than the facts. 